In this video, I would like to explain uh, the concept of uh, original data and new data. These are the two terms uh, used in the law of scale transactions. First, you have to understand that a debtor is a person uh, who has property interests uh, in the collateral. And the collateral is defined as personal property subject to security interest. So if you combine these two definitions, you will conclude that debtor is a person, it could be a natural person or a legal person, such as a corporation, uh, that has uh, ownership rights or less than ownership rights, some property rights, in the personal property that is subject to security interest. So, of course, when a secure transaction takes place, it is the debtor who offers the collateral as security uh, for safeguarding the loan. Now, you should also distinguish between a debtor and obligor. Obligor is the person who's obligated to pay back the loan, whereas the debtor is the person who offers personal property as security. Now, in most secure transactions, the debtor and the obligor are the same person but they don't have to be the same persons. You could have a debtor and then you could have a different person who is obligated uh, to pay back the loan. Now, suppose that the debtor sells the collateral and the buyer takes the collateral subject to security interest. Now, not all sales of free the collateral from security interest. So as a general principle, the security interest survives the disposition of the collateral. Now the question is, is the buyer a debtor? And the answer is yes. If the security interest survives disposition, the purchase of the collateral, then the buyer has interests, property interest, in a piece of property that is subject to security interest. Of course, the security interest has been created by the previous debtor and not by the buyer. But nevertheless, because the property continues to be subjected to security interest, uh, therefore the buyer, under the definition of debtor, becomes a debtor. Now you might ask, what happens to the first debtor who created the security interest? Uh, is he still the debtor or is he not the debtor at all? Well, the answer to that question is that he's still the debtor. Because a debtor is defined as a person who has interest in the collateral. And the collateral is defined as personal property subject to security interests and the proceeds. This part and the proceeds is important. So when the first debtor receives uh, the proceeds of the sale, uh, those proceeds constitute the collateral. And because the first debtor has rights in the proceeds, therefore the first debtor uh, continues to be the debtor. So in other words, when a disposition takes place, when a sale takes place, uh, the first debtor who created the security interest remains the debtor and the buyer also becomes the debtor. Now you might say, well, who's the obligor between these two debtors? And of course, uh, the first debtor is going to be the obligor if there's not a separate obligor. Uh, then the first debtor is going to be obligor and the buyer who's the debtor is only going to be the debtor and not the obligor. You must have noticed that I'm not using the word new debtor and the original debtor. I'm saying the first debtor and the buyer as debtor. And I am doing so because of a distinct reason. Every time you sell a collateral, a debtor 
uh, might be generated, but that data is not in your data. Now, in order to understand the concept of new data and original data, you must see them as congenital twins. A new data cannot exist without the original data, and the original data cannot exist without the new data. In other words, a new data comes into being only when there's an original data, and we call the data the original data only if a new data has come into being. So you might ask, how does the new data come into being? Well, the critical uh, condition that must occur is that the security agreement entered into by the original data is assigned to the new data. So whenever the security agreement is transferred with all its rights and obligations to another person, then the other person becomes the new debtor. Now, in an ordinary sale, the security agreement is never assigned to the buyer. It is only the collateral that is sold to the buyer. But if the security agreement itself is assigned to another person, and now this other person becomes bound by the security agreement, and the first debtor is no longer bound by the security agreement, then we have a new debtor and the original debtor. Now, the assignment of the security agreement or the transfer of the rights and obligation under the security agreement can take place either by means of another contract where the original debtor and the new debtor sign a new contract under which the new debtor takes on all the rights and obligations uh, arising under the security agreement uh, signed by or authenticated by the first debtor. And the other way that uh, the security agreement can be assigned is by operation of law. For example, uh, acquisition and mergers law. Uh, if uh, the first debtor is acquired by another person, then we have the first debtor as original debtor. If the first debtor merges with another person, then the other person is the new debtor and the original debtor is uh, the person that has merged. So, in other words, the new debtor and the original debtor come into being, very important, when the security agreement becomes binding on the new debtor, and that security interest becomes binding either by means of a contract or by operation of law, such as law of acquisition and mergers. Now, there's one more point that I want to make uh, in the case uh, of uh, the classification of debtors, and that is the concept of double debtor. Now, double debtor is somewhat different from uh, the debtor and the original debtor and the new debtor. Now, suppose that uh, a debtor uh, sells the collateral uh, to another person. Now, if the security interest survives, then the new person is not the new debtor, but the new person is simply the debtor, because the security agreement has not been assigned. So now we have the first debtor and the second debtor. Uh, the second debtor, suppose, after buying the collateral, uh, creates a security interest in order to obtain a loan, and now we have two security interests. The first security interest was created by the first debtor, who is the seller of the collateral. And the second security interest is created by the buyer of the collateral, who is the second debtor. So now we have two security interests in the same collateral. And we have two debtors, the first debtor and the second debtor. And there are two different security agreements. The first debtor has its own security agreement, and the second debtor has its own security agreement. Maybe they are two different lenders. The first debtor has his own lender, and the second debtor has his own lender. So in this situation, 
uh, we use the term double debtors. Uh, this is not an official term. Uh, this is a term used in the official comments of Article 9. So I don't think this term is important because it's not a statutory term. But nevertheless, the concept of double debtor is important to distinguish between uh, the, f the new debtor and the original debtor. The new debtor and the original debtor come into being. This twin uh, comes into being only when the security agreement is assigned from the original debtor to the new debtor, and the new debtor becomes bound by the security agreement.